Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, St. Paul. Amen. It's a good day to be here. Amen. And I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Amen. We welcome you. Amen. And we're glad that you're here. Amen. And we thank God that our theme for this year, it begins with me in 2023. And again, we welcome you to St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. We thank God for our pastor, the Reverend Michael A. Pope Sr., our assistant pastor, Reverend Andrew McDavid Sr., Reverend Jimmy McKnight, our associate minister, and our very own minister, Gabriel Gorby, amen. amen. Again, we greet you with Jesus' joy on today, and we just thank God that he allowed us to see another day, amen. Amen, amen. it's a good day to be here, amen. Amen. We want to go into our call to worship on today. It's going to come from Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. And here's the good news, amen. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Amen? Amen. 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 His mercy endureth forever. Amen? And we thank God for his mercy and his grace on today. But let us pray as we open up our service in prayer today. Oh, Father, we come to, to you today, oh, Father, in prayer, just to give thanks to you, for you are good. And, oh, Father, we thank you, oh, Father, for being good in our lives today, oh, Father, for being strong in our lives today, oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, for being our healer, oh, God for being our encourager, oh God, for we know there are some under the sound of my voice, oh God, who needs encouragement on today. But oh God, we thank you that you are all things to us, oh God, all things that pertain to life, you are that. And we thank you for being the great I am. And oh Father, we pray that we will lift you up, oh God, lift you up with all that we can give you today, oh God, that we would praise your holy name and that you would be glorified but that your people will be edified once they leave this place. Thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. 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 We want to greet our, our visitors today. Amen. We thank God we, that we have visitors in the house today, but we just thank God for you. And if you're so inclined to stand and share your name on today, this is your time to do so. Amen. If you have any visitors who are so inclined to stand, amen. And if you're watching via Facebook for the first time, amen, we welcome you into the service of the Lord. Amen. 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 So again, we thank God for everyone who's here. Amen. It's part of our family. Amen. So we just thank God that you're here in the service of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we want to go into our announcements. Amen. We are going into our announcements. And you can see on the board there that we had a, a great turnout yesterday for our sisterhood uh, meeting, amen, the broadcast from Priscilla Schreier, amen, if I got her name right, amen, the simulcast, amen. You see on the board there all the, the St. Paul people, amen, all the ladies that came out, amen. So we just give my hand, amen. 
thank God. It was, a, it was a wonderful time as I have have heard, amen, and, and a good time of fellowship as well, amen? Amen. And then our second announcement, we want you to mark your calendars, amen, September the 10th at 6, starting at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. There will be a Hezekiah House Benefit Concert, amen, featuring our very own Reverend Jimmy McKnight, the Waymarks Trio, and the Martin Luther King Jr. Male Chorus. That's at St. Peter's. Uh, you see the address there. It's in St. Albans, 2601 Forestal Avenue, St. Albans, West Virginia. Amen? Amen. Amen. And also we see following the following week, amen, September the 16th, we have the citywide yard sale. And as, as we are participating in that, uh, we'll be in our parking lot at the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church parking lot. And we ask that you would call, contact the church office if you want to reserve a table, a space, amen. We would love to hear from you, amen, in the church office as soon as you can, amen, because the time is coming on us, amen. September the 16th also, also on that day, the deaconesses will have a fish fry, amen. <laughs> and they're requesting uh, donations uh, toward that effort. Uh, to purchase supplies for this event. And you can contact Sister Doris Clater, amen. And I'm sure if you can't get in contact with her, you can contact the church office as well, amen. Fish fry, amen. September the 16th, along with the yard sale, amen. So again, we thank God for those announcements. We pray that you would adhere to those announcements on today, amen. Amen, amen. But as I read to you, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Amen. So we're going to stand and actually to stand as we sing on today. And just let the Lord know that we know that he is good. Amen. We want to hold to God's unchanging hands. So those who want to praise God standing, amen, you can do that. Amen. And if you want to put your hands together, you can do that too. Amen. Free to worship God, amen.
thank God that he changes not, amen? Amen. And that we can hold to his unchanging hand, amen? Amen. Amen. We sing those songs, amen, but we want to look at the words to those songs, amen, and let it get us, encourage you on today, that we may hold to his unchanging hand, amen? Amen. And again, we thank God on today that you're here with us today. Amen. And we want to praise God in the sanctuary today. And we're going to change it just a little bit on today. Amen. We're going to ask if anyone has a testimony that they would love to, to share with the people of God on today. That we may all be edified on today. Amen. If there's one person or, or two or three that may want to stand and, and give a praise report or a testimony, we would love to hear from you at this time. Amen. Amen. And I will kick it off. Amen. <laughs> I didn't say that if I didn't have a testimony. Amen. <laughs> but I thank God for your prayers. Amen. For my mother. Sister Marva Lewis, amen. She had successful surgery, amen, on Monday, amen, amen, amen. She came home, she came home Tuesday, amen, and if she's watching today, I thank God for my mother, amen, amen. I thank God for God's grace, amen, amen, and I thank God for what he's doing in, in her life today, amen. Amen. Strengthen her each and every day. So I just thank God and I stand on his promises that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Amen. 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 And in concert, in concert with that, I would share another testimony that I shared on Wednesday night that uh, there was a lady that we, uh, that was my grandmother's nurse at the hospital 16 years ago. And she was the nurse, one of the nurses, when my mom was in the hospital. And she remembered my mom's name, remembered our, the family. And she came out of the, and I, while I was in the waiting room and, and, and pointed at me, and said, you remember me? <laughs> and uh, I say that all that to say that we, can, we make impressions on people that we don't realize, amen? And uh, hopefully good ones, amen, that 16 years later that a person would come and say, I remember you from 16 years ago. That is when you have shown yourself to be a light and people can see that light, amen, amen. amen. So I just want to share that testimony with you today that, we, that I may encourage myself to continue to let my light shine because I never know who I am in company with, amen. amen. That I may plant a seed that, that I don't even know that I planted, amen. Just by being kind, amen. Amen. But we want to open up for anyone else who may have a testimony that they would like to share on today, amen, or a praise report, amen. This is a good place to tell what God has done for you, amen. 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 Would there be another? Yeah. I'm going to stand, but we should always stand and praise and thank God for all that he does. Uh, and my testimony has uh, been, I guess, last week, I think, when we went up front for, had all the to go up front to thank God. One thing for being there for my grandson, he's gone through several things with his surgery for his uh, shoulder, where his muscle was tore from uh, uh, in the shoulder and uh, infection set in, and then he had that fix, and my daughter had to go way out to Missouri for that, and then she came back, and then the next day, the opening tour again and the, the physician said it was thin skin or whatever but I just want to thank God because he's always there. We're here so God is everywhere. Yeah. He's yeah. Yeah. looking out for him wherever he is and I just want God want us to be thankful for a God that knows all and can do all and he knows every hair we have on our heads. So I just want to thank him and praise him and give him all the praise. Amen. 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 Let there be, a, be another. Yes, praise the Lord. And uh, as Carla said, yeah, God, God is good and God is all knowing and God is, uh, he knows everything that's going on. So I just praise him. But it's been four years since I had my uh, cancer surgery and, and uh, radiation treatment. 
and uh, my results are still clear after four years. So I Amen. 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 You know, a, lot, a lot of times we take things for granted. As the years go by, we just you know we just take it for granted that the radiation worked and, and everything is fine, and that's what we expected or whatever. But in humility, we have to understand that it's all up to God. It's God's grace and God's mercy that lets us live from day to day. And uh, you never know, you know, the same way that something happened the first time, it can happen the second time, or something else can happen. You know, things come on you suddenly or whatever, and so we just need to be prayed up and, and just trusting and understanding that we have a gracious God who is full of grace and mercy. And so I'm just so thankful that uh, I'm able to be able to stand here today. I'm going to be trying to sing a song after a while. I still have some problems with certain portions of songs or whatever. And uh, But, you know, I said I, I'm never going to let down the Lord because he's never let down on me. And so I just give him the best that I can. And, and that's all that you can do because it's not all about me or it's not all about you. It's, it's all about him. And I just want to sing praises to him. Amen. So just thankful and, and just want to pray for uh, several people. Uh, I know this is not crazy worship yet, but uh, my son, uh, Greg's wife, kissed him. I, I want prayers for her. And uh, also, uh, my son, Kevin, and his mom, I want prayers for him and her. And also, uh, I want, want to pray for uh, Brother, Brian's, <coughs> Brother Brian's mom. And for anybody else who is under the sound of my voice or uh, uh, is in need of prayer, we just always need to pray for each other and uh, uh, show our concern and our care. That's what we're here for. So I'm just so thankful that uh, I'm able to be able to stand today and offer that prayer and, and ask God to continue to look over people. Ms. Matching, you know, uh, and I, you know, I mean, what can you say? All the years that she's been faithful to this church and everything, and, and always you're counting her as a friend. That's, that's what's important, being able to be friends. Brother Sonny grew up with Sonny all the way from way back to you know, toddlers. So I'm just so thankful to be able to be amongst people, Ralph and Lewis. So I just thank God for friends and for situations and for work, what he has done and for where he has lifted me from. And as I say, I, I, won't, I won't go back on doing what I've been asked to do for him. And we just do the best that we can. That's all we can do. Just do the best that you can. And just trust and believe in him. Thank you. Amen. 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 And Sister Pope, if I didn't mention her. Amen. Amen. Sister Kathleen. Good morning, St. Paul. Good morning. I just have a praise report um, about my niece. Um, she had a
first of all, I want to thank the Lord. I am a 19-year cancer survivor. Yes. Amen. Amen. He did my surgery. The doctor didn't do my surgery. God did my surgery. Amen. Amen. And my wonderful wife that took care of the old man while he was getting there. Amen. Okay. Amen. And I appreciate her, love her. And she's a God-loving woman. And I praise her. And I thank you for all for all your prayers. If you ever pray for me, thank you. And Amen. I thank you so much. Amen. Amen. text message that Brother Gabriel had sent yesterday it said, God is moving. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Do we have another who would like to share, amen, a testimony before we go into our prayer? Yes, I, I want to thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Uh, three, I uh, run church anniversary time three weeks ago, whatever. We, I was having very uh, much trouble seeing, and I didn't understand what it was. But each and every night, I just kept praying, and God does wonderful, mysterious things, wonderful things, mm -hmm. because I was praying for, for to God to, to, to give me the strength to continue helping my mother, take care of my mother, and it just started opening up. Everything started opening up, so I got checked, and my problem actually was, was that uh, I needed to see an ophthalmologist. And I have an appointment with one uh, on the 6th or, or the 8th of next month. And it could be a change of glasses. It could be a change of vision because I'll be honest with you. And I know it's kind of dumb, but I, I've missed all my, well, my annual visits to get examined. I'm supposed to go every six months, but I haven't been, been for a year. So it might have something to do with my glasses. Uh, so I just praise God for just giving me the strength to keep on going. Amen. 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 Would there be one more? Amen. Would there be another? Now one more would be me. Amen. Uh, giving honor to God who is the head of all our lives. Amen. Uh, you all keep me in your prayers. I got to go for a doctor's checkup and blood work. I got to get an overall, oh, Lord. <laughs> but you all pray and hope my tests come out good. Uh, I'm wore out. I'm, t I'm, I'm there, but I'm just kind of wore out. 
that convention. Woo! They, they wore me out up there, but I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Uh, just keep me in your prayers. But I have a song to close out with this, going, taking us into the, the prayer. Because it goes something like this. Jerry, you can help me a little bit. It goes, Jesus on the main line.
You can speak your request, make your request known unto God. Tell him all about your struggle. And he will hear your faintest cry. But the good part is he will answer by and by. He's an on-time God, church. And he will answer in his time. And it will be right on time. Oh God. So as you make your request known on today, know that God is on time and he will answer your prayer. Yeah. And as we pray for the Sherrod family, Sister Pope, Sister Mary Pope, the neighbor's family. Amen. We see here the names of family. Amen. Amen. The Faulkner family. Amen. Tyree family. Cunningham family. Davis family. Amen. Amen. Yes, God hears. God hears and he knows. Sister Mary Pope especially. family, amen. amen. The Hamlet family, amen. Smooth family. Amen. And we're praying for our country, amen. Those in, the, in Hawaii, amen, we pray. And he will answer you. Hear a little prayer wheel turning. Oh, yes. Know a little fire is burning. Have a little talk with you. We'll make it all right. Father God, as we we come together, touching and agreeing on today, oh Father, that you are a good father. You are a good dad to us and one who has never missed a child support payment, oh God. So Father, we thank you, oh God, that you are looking, you are sitting high, but you're looking low your ear is intending to our cry today oh god you hear us oh god we thank you oh father that you hear our hearts desire oh father but oh fathers we come on today we come interceding on behalf of those who who may not even be able to pray for themselves oh god or we're coming in agreement with someone else on today of how good you are and how sovereign you are, oh God. And oh Father, we thank you that you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that we may have the right to eternal life, that you took our sins and atoned for our sins, oh God. And oh Father, we thank you, oh Father, that you put all things under the feet of Jesus Christ. So Father, we thank you. We don't want to inform you of anything. We just want to let you know that we're trusting in you, oh God. We put our faith in you today, oh God. We don't know how we're going to make it, but you do, oh Father. And you're going to make a way somehow. So Father, as we pray for those who may need help, need a good physician, oh Father, we come into the great physician right now. So, Father, we pray that you, that we know that blood pressure, oh God, is under your feet, oh God. We thank you that nothing has caught you by surprise, oh God, and that you are one who can do what we cannot do. What man cannot do, God, you can do, for there is nothing impossible with thee. And we thank you, oh Father. But, oh God, as we come to lift up our families on the day you heard the request for family prayer, oh God, that you would touch and go into our family homes, oh God, and draw us closer to thee, oh God. You heard the prayer that we stand on our faith, oh God, that others will see it, oh God, and wonder what must I do to be saved. But, oh God, we thank you, oh God, that we can stand in the gap 
for those who need right. a healing on today. Those who need encouragement day today, oh God. Let us, let us, that you speak through us, oh God, with an encouraging word. Oh God, we pray. But oh God, we pray for our pastor, oh God. We pray, oh Father, that you would strengthen him, oh God. That you would, you would uh, comfort his heart, oh God, as, as he prays for his wife on today, oh God. Thank you, oh God. We pray, oh God, that your will will be done, oh God. Hear our prayers today, oh God. Search our hearts, oh God, we pray. Oh God, and if you find anything that's not like thee, oh God, we pray that you will remove it, oh God. We just need your help. As simple as that, oh God, we need help. And we want to say, God, that we are coming to you. For all our help comes from the Lord. And in your name we do pray. Amen and thank God. All our help come from him, amen. Yeah, yeah. Tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our pain. But he will answer, amen. Answer, answer by and by. Now, amen. His little prayer will turn into an end. A little fire is burning. Even the prayer that you may not have spoken with your mouth, amen. Yes. But it's on your heart, amen. But we want to transition today, oh God, and we thank God for his many blessings, amen. But we want to go into our offertory part of our service on today, amen, and giving back to God. What a privilege it is, what a privilege it is to give back unto him, amen. So we're going to ask our deacons to come and, and trust T. Hill if he would come and assist us as we receive our offering on today.
right ushers. for the giver. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. All these blessings, they come from God. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 So we are ready for the word of God. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God on today? Amen. Amen. This is a good time for you to have your amens that you had in your pocket all day. You can pull those out. Amen. As you hear the word of God, you can agree with what's being said. Amen. But at this time, we're going to ask uh, Minister Gabriel Gorby. He's going to lead us in prayer. And then we're going to have another selection from the male chorus. And then the next voice you will hear will be that of our pastor, the Reverend Michael A. Pope Sr. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you and we know that we are not informing you of anything you do not already know. But Lord, we got a lot of stuff going on in our church right now. We got a lot of people who are in need. And you know more so than we do of what they need, how much they need. And sometimes you even know the things that we don't know that we need. And Lord, this morning, right now, we also just thank you that, that, that your joy, your joy is our strength. Right now, we pray that that strength be with Pastor Polk right now as he teaches and preaches to us, Lord, that, that your word would come from his lips, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would indwell him during these hard and trivial times, Lord. We just thank you that you can give him the strength to stand before us as a good leader, let us follow in his example, Lord, that all of this goodness, all of this strength, all of this joy that he has been given, it only comes from you, and we recognize that, God. We recognize that you are our joy and that you are our strength. And right now, we just praise you for that, Lord, and we just pray over Miss Polk right now and uh, just be with Pastor as, as he preaches the word. Let it be all that you say to us, Lord, and soften our hearts and open our ears and our minds and our spirits that we may hear you, that we may hear your word, receive it, and not only hear it, but walk forward and do it. We love you, we praise you, we lift you up, and it's in Christ's mighty name that we pray. Amen. Amen.
praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, we heard a lot of prayers this morning, a lot of people who are in need of prayer. And the one constant thing is that God remains the same. And what he's done in the past, we know we can trust that he will do again. So we just give him all the glory and all the praise and put our trust in, in him. Hold me, Jesus, in the hollow of thy hand. Lead me, Lord, to a better land. Lord, if you lead me, you know I won't stray. Keep me, Lord, day by day. Oh, hold me. In the hollow, all I want you to do, Lord, is just to hold me, hold me, Father. Thank you. In the hollow. Lord, I'm tired. I, I get so weak and worn. I know you'll be right there, Lord. Just to give me the strength to carry on. Over my hills and mountains. They get so hard to climb. But I know, I know you'll be right there, Lord. Because you'll always, always be on time. Oh. Sing that verse one more time. Lord, I'm tired. I feel so weak and worn. But I know you'll be right there, Lord, just to give me the strength to carry on. Over my hills and mountains, they get so hard to climb. I know you'll be right there, Lord, because you'll always, always be on time. Oh.
I just want you to hold me, Lord. Just put your loving arms around me, Jesus. Lord, you know I'm your child. And you know, Lord, that I depend on you for everything. And Lord, I'm just so thankful, Lord, that you love us, Lord. Lord, I'm just so thankful to have you as my God. My Lord, my Savior, thank you, Jesus. And then just get down and hug me, Lord, and just hug me, Lord. Just let me know you care, Lord. That's all I need to know. Lord, I'm depending on you for everything. So just hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me. In the hollow. things get hard, Lord, I just need to know you're there, Lord. Circumstances might seem like it's not going to work out. But I know I read in your word that you said that everything is going to be alright. So just trust you, Lord. Just hold us, Lord. Hold us in your hand. Just hold us, hold us, hold us, hold us, hold us. In the hollow of thy hand. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the whole church say amen. Okay, media ministry, I want to see how good those cameras work this morning. Zoom in real close on me this morning. Pull it up real close because I want our listeners to know via Facebook, all over the country, sometimes you just have to be still before the Lord and let him love on you. That way we'll know that he is God. But you have to be still. Amen to Sister Marva, Sister Cindy, Deacon Berger, Sister Lessie, my wife, and so many others. The word of God says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And it's Dr. Warren Wiersbe that shares, who would have thought that the safest place to be is in the shadow? The safest place to be in the shadow. It is when it's the shadow of the Almighty he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want our members, all in the sound of my voice, to continue to abide in the shadow. 
because God has you covered. Anybody believe that God has you covered? Then you ought to praise him right now. You ought to thank him right now. You ought to give him glory right now. All over the Facebook. All in the sanctuary. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Lord shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let him hold you. Let him love on you. Be still and know that he is God. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, I uh, also just want to take time this morning and to thank uh, Dr. Burton, our media ministry, Sister Janice, Sister Carla, all of those ladies, uh, uh, Sister Pinky, Sister Doris, so many, Dr. Jeanette. Thank you all so much for yesterday. I mean, we had a good number of ladies that were out and uh, supported the ministry. And then uh, when Sister Polk had to leave that, uh, so many of you just stepped up. And she wants you to know that she is so thankful to all of you uh, who, who served on yesterday and who were a part of the ministry on yesterday. Thank you all so much for what you do. Amen, amen. I do believe that uh, Sister Polk is gonna be coming home today, so I'm, I'm praising God, I'm praising God, praise God. I do wanna preach this morning just for a little while and in the book of Romans, in the 12th chapter, I just want to use two verses this morning. The Lord has blessed you. You're able to stand to your feet. Would you stand with me as we reverence the word of God for the people of God? I beseech you. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord and just for a little while this morning, I want to share reflections on the believer's sacrifice. The believer's sacrifice. And in this 12th chapter of the book of Romans, it's the Apostle Paul that shares the remedy for living as a redeemed people in a fallen world. So much so that Paul, he begins this 12th chapter with the words, I 
beseech you. I beseech you. In other words, Paul is saying that I appeal and beg of you. I urge, I plead with you. And then he says, therefore, brethren. And up to this point, Paul has already shared with his listeners. He's already shared with his readers a number of things. He's already shared the word of God that says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you know, all means all. Nothing on the other side of all. All is all inclusive and it means all. He, he's already said for all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. He's already said that. And he's already said that the wages of sin is death. He's already said that, but thank God for the conjunction. But he says, for the wages of sin is death, Yes, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody thankful for the gift this morning? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's already said, and he's already said, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He's already said that. He's already said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. He's already shared that. And Paul has already shared with them a number of things. He's already shared forgiveness of sin is through Christ. He's already told us that Christ took our punishment. And when he took our punishment, we were made right with God. Christ took our punishment. And so we are justified by faith. And that faith brings joy because the power of sin has been broken. And so Paul appeals. Yes. Yeah. Paul appeals to his readers. He urges and he pleads. And he pleads by the mercies of God. It's, it's quiet in here this morning. Too quiet for me because somebody in here this morning, I know that somebody here ought to know something about the mercies of God. Now through the years, God has been so good. No, 60 years ago to this date, no, uh, this nation experienced the historic march on Washington, D.C. and the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream speech. No, we know something about the mercies of God and the truth of the matter is that we have come a long way 
children. We never would have made it had it not been for the mercies of God. And how many of us know that we haven't arrived yet and we still have a long way to go. But thank God that God is plenteous. He's plenteous in goodness and in mercy. Oh, he's able to take us not just a piece of the way, but all of the way. We've made it this far by the mercies of God. Anybody believe that this morning? You ought to thank him right now. We ought to thank God right now. No, we ought to thank him. And oftentimes we need to reflect. And we just need to ask ourselves. Has God ever done anything? No, I know he has. Has God ever forgiven you? Has, has, has God ever healed you? Has God ever delivered you? Has he ever loved you? Has he ever opened up doors that were shut in your face? Has he ever redeemed you? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. For you are not your own. For you have been bought with a price. And that price is the blood of Jesus. Oh, you ought to thank him this morning that you are covered by the blood. No, everybody in here ought to be saying something this morning. You ought to open your mouth and praise God this morning because all of your life, God has been good to you. And he's been too good for me to be quiet. He's been too good for me to sit on my do nothing, but he's been too good for me to have a closed mouth and be mealy mouth about what God has done. I dare you to tell somebody about his goodness, about his mercy, and his loving kindness. Even when I wasn't so good, God is still good. Oh my goodness. No, it is God who forgiveth all of our iniquities. Not just some of them, but all of our iniquities. Make no doubt about it. It is God who healeth our diseases. It is God who redeemeth a life from destruction. I was on my way to a devil's hell, but God snatched me from the very pits of hell. He redeemed my life from destruction. He crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. No, the mercy that I received yesterday was not the same mercy that I received today. For the psalmist says, morning by morning, new mercies I see. And I'm thankful. New mercies I see. And all that I need, God has provided. Anybody thankful for the provisions of God? All that I need, God has provided. While I was trying to figure it out, he already got it worked out. It comes from the word providio that God is able to see before. He already knew what we were going to need and he has provided not just some, 
but all of my needs. I'm thankful this morning. I'm thankful this morning, and we ought to be able to count our blessings. The songwriter said, count them one by one and see what God has done. No, you didn't do it. God did it. He blessed you right here when you, when, when you were struggling to, to make it. He, he blessed you right here when folks said that you couldn't. God said that you could. He blessed you over here when folk tried to shut doors in your face. He opened up doors and windows too. You ought to thank him and bless his name. I'm thankful for what God has done and for what God is doing in our lives. And so it's here that Paul tells us, he says, it's by the mercies of God that we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. When we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, this is what we're saying. We're saying, Lord, I'm yours. And I belong to you. No, the truth of the matter is that we're God's property. No, we belong to God. So God, I belong to you and I'm available to you. Use me, Lord, any way you see fit. I'm yours. I belong to you. Now you can't do this if you don't have no gratitude. We do this out of gratitude, out of gratitude that our sins have been forgiven. And when we think of all that God, listen, when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done, not only for me, but for you too, my soul does magnify Anybody magnify, oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Yes, I'm yours, Lord. We belong to you. We do this out of gratitude that our sins have been forgiven. And so when we think of all that God has done for us, we ought to know that this is not too much. It's not too much that God could ask of us. And so let me share with you just three qualities, and I'm going to leave you alone this morning. Three qualities describe the believer's sacrifice. It is to be living it is to be holy and it is to be acceptable. You remember in the Old Testament when sacrificing an animal according to God's law, a priest killed the animal. He cut the animal into pieces and he placed it onto the altar. No sacrifice was important. Yes, it was. But even in the Old Testament, God made it clear that obedience from the heart was much more important. How many of us know to obey is better than sacrifice? No, that's the word of God. There are numerous places in Scripture. God makes it perfectly clear that obedience from the heart is much more important. Three qualities. It is to be living, it is to be holy, and it is to be acceptable. 
our sacrifice is to be living. No, God wants us to sacrifice. And God wants us to sacrifice ourselves. Not animals, but ourselves. And we are to daily lay aside our own desires and follow God. We ought to give our bodies to him. Listen, before we trusted Christ, we used our bodies for sinful pleasures. <laughs> I wish I had some truth tellers this morning. Maybe we've gotten too old today. But listen, when we were young, we, we did everything that we thought we were big enough. Uh, listen, I'm not talking about you, but I'm talking about me. I did everything that I thought that I was big enough and bad enough to do. But now that I belong to him, we ought to use our bodies for the glory of the, in other words, if God can't get the glory, we ought not be doing it. I know that the world has is, is, is got the squeeze on us. I know that the world is going in a different direction, but we belong to God. We belong to him. We are the, y'all laughing at me. We're to use our body for God's glory. No, the Christian body is God's temple. It houses the Holy Ghost. The spirit of the Lord, it, it dwells on the inside. And anybody know it's what's on the inside that helps me to deal with what's on the outside and our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God dwells on the inside. We ought to glorify God in our bodies and we ought to be a living sacrifice. Not dead, but living. Would it be a living sacrifice? And then our sacrifice is to be holy. Holy. And that just means set apart. We're set apart for God's use. We belong to God. Give God your mind. Listen, the world wants to control your mind. So give it to God. Give God your mind. The world wants to control your mind. But God wants to transform your mind. Yes, yes. Our sacrifice is to be living. Our sacrifice is to be holy. And then our sacrifice is to be acceptable. You know, sacrifices offered to God are not enough in themselves. For the sacrifice, the offering, it must be well pleasing to God. And we need to ask ourselves, are we pleasing to God. No. Sacrifice in itself is not enough. It must be well pleasing to God. So give God your will. No. When we yield our wills to God, God's power can take over. 
it becomes not my will, but thy will be done. It's to be living, it's to be holy, and it is to be acceptable. So let me close this word this morning. Don't be conformed to this world. In other words, don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. But be ye transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. Listen, so many across the globe are in search of change. We really are. And so am I. But not just any old kind of change. I'm looking for a godly change. Change in behavior. A change in lifestyle. A change in morals and, and, and values based on the word of God. As a nation, as a people, we don't have to stay in the shape that we're in. God wants to do a new thing in all of our lives. Not just any old kind of change, but a godly change. But let me just tell the truth this morning and shame the devil. It is here that I opt from change to transformation. For it's about more than just change. No, it's, it, it's not just about any old kind of change. Yes, I can change. But let me tell you, change only lasts for a while, but when you've been transformed, your mind has been renewed. Is there anybody here this morning? Be ye transformed. Transformation is the work of the Holy Spirit. Transformation is about renewal. And to renew the mind is to adjust one's spiritual vision and thinking to the mind of God, which has a transforming effect on one's life. For it's the renewed mind. The renewed mind enables us to discern the will of God. It's then that we are released from the control of the world around us and we come to know what God has in mind for us. How do we renew our minds? We renew our minds by constant prayer. How do we renew our minds? We renew our minds by constant prayer and by constant meditation on God's word. Yes, it is a long process, but how many of us know you ought not think more of yourself than you ought because none of us have arrived yet. We're not there yet. Keep on meditating on the word of God. Keep on praying and calling on the word of God. Our minds have to be renewed daily. This is our reasonable worship. You thought that we only worshiped on Sundays. No, we worship every day. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. God has been so good to me. Every day he's blessing me over and over again. Renewed mind will produce a life 
that will stand the test of time. Listen, I know we don't want to go through nothing. But a faith that is never tested is a faith that can't be trusted. How do you deal with life situations? How do we handle the hand that we've been dealt with? We have to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Meditate on the word. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, to shape us, to make us, to mold us, to, to shape our thoughts, to shape our behaviors, to mold us into what God is calling us to be. This is our reasonable worship. Our sacrifice is to be living to be holy and it is to be acceptable let's pray this morning Father God we thank you for this life and all that it has to offer and we know That there's more to this life than the here and the now. And that one day you're going to crack the sky. And you're going to come back for your church. One without spot nor wrinkle. And we just pray that you would help us to be ready when you come. This is a lifelong process. We haven't arrived yet. But this too shall pass. Help us to hold on and to hold out to the change, the transformation, till it comes. You are here, you've heard the gospel message preached today. We invite you to come. We invite you this morning. Don't be afraid to face us. have a heaven nor a hell to put anybody we just need to make sure that we're ready when it comes won't you come this morning he wants to renew your mind Don't be squeezed by the way of the world. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him. Won't you come this morning? You, you have no church home. I'd love to be your pastor. Won't you come? He is able. He's able. He's both willing and able.
just right now. <laughs>